I mentioned uh, we learned about uh, finer, and the N stands for novel. So uh, on the same lines, the clinical equipoise is the true state of uncertainty. Okay. We want to do clinical research when we are sure that there is true state of uncertainty. Uh, clinical equipoise and ethics of clinical research are important issues that we have to keep in mind when we are uh, developing the research project and developing the research ideas. Clinical equipoise exists when there is a true state of uncertainty about the effectiveness of an intervention. If the answer is already known, then you should not be thinking of doing yet another, another study. The best example of research performed in the absence of clinical equipoise is illustrated in this example by Ferguson et, et al., where they conducted a meta-analysis of randomized control trials of aprotonin in cardiac surgery. So here's that example. What we see on this slide, on the left-hand side, here we have the odds ratios. These are the results of the meta-analysis of the individual studies from that meta-analysis of the clinical trial that was published in 2015. So what we see on these results that by the first, by the third study, let me first orient you what we have here. These are the study, study numbers, individual study, what is the publication date. So the first study was published in March 89 and the last one was published in September 2001. What we see here, these are the number 0.01 all the way to 100, there is uh, favors control, and this side is which favors a protein. Okay, what we have in the middle is one, and these are the 95 odds ratios, point estimates here in dots, and these whiskers are the odds ratios for the 95% confidence intervals. These are the 95% confidence interval limits. So anything, any of those lines that crosses one means that the results are not statistically significant. What we see here is that by the third study, this study, by sep that was published in September, uh, sem September 1990, efficacy was demonstrated. Okay. So there was a significant association that favors a protein. And by December 1992, this study over here, what we see after this study, the point estimates are pretty much stable there's not a whole lot of variability in the point estimates. And, but what we see here, that the, the confidence intervals are getting narrower. Okay, so we are getting more precise estimates. So that, and these 47 additional studies that were conducted after 1992, those are not providing any additional information. They, and those also fail to cite previous literature. So this is a classical example that equipoise did, did not exist. There is uns uncertainty here for, until the second or the third study was published. But afterwards, there is no clinical equipoise. Okay. Because the answer was previously known. How do we get to know whether clinical equipoise occurs or not? How do we establish clinical equipoise? There are different resources that we can use. We can, uh, as I mentioned at the start, uh, when I mentioned you evidence-based practice, most of the evidence that we get for the clinical practice now is a lot lesser from the textbooks. Those are from the scientific journals, medical journals, and articles. So similarly, in order to establish clinical equipoise, we have to look for the single studies, the published research studies. And those resources can be PubMed, Ovid, or any other databases that we use for clinical research, published clinical research. We can also look at the synopsis of single studies, which are published in evidence-based abstract journals. Um, Cochrane reviews, um, most of you are aware of that because those are provide important evidence about the synthesis of the studies, uh, uh, reviews of the published research. Then synopsis of the synthesis, evidence-based uh, journals, they publish synopsis of synthesis and clinical practice guidelines. All of these are different resources that we can use to establish clinical equipoise. 